process that now we want to leverage is called tone mapping. Tone mapping is an attempt to be able to take an image, an high radiance image like the one we talked about, the radiance map, and converting it to a space where we can now actually visualize it. So one basic thing we need to do is we want to map one set of colors to another uh, in a reduced space. And we want to basically account for being able to display it on a medium that has a limited dynamic range. So again, uh, even displays actually are built the same way as sensors. They could, we should actually be able to go from 0 to 55. We want to be able to dynamically get the colors in a space that a display can show it. And again, as I said, a printer. Uh, and variety of things exist on this kind of technology. And of course, we want to be able to display these things on printers, monitors, and projectors. This is primarily to address the fact that printers and most of the displays right now are inadequate in terms of how they can represent it. Now, of course, these days with 4K displays and all that kind of stuff, we can actually really display a lot of high dynamic range information. But of course, the content for those types of displays is hard. So tone mapping addresses the problem of being able to get the contrast reduction from the scene radiance image, which is captured in the radiance map, to a displayable range. It preserves the image details and color appearance because remember, what we did with an HDR process was really capture the radiance map from a scene, but we can't display it. So what we want to do is basically convert it into a form, and that's what tone mapping does. Uh, many many well-grown algorithms are existing for this kind of an approach. We'll be discussing some of them in detail in this class also, and I just list a few of them. I encourage you to look at them. Now, before we go on, there's one thing I wanted to add. If you look at this image, I actually get bothered by um, both tone mapping and HDR on the web a lot. Sometimes, and this is one of the perhaps most overused uh, imaging technology out there on the internet these days, uh, and people are actually generating images that to me look ghostly. So this image, of course, is capturing all of the detail, but with the clouds and all that kind of unnatural uh, lighting, it actually feels unnatural. In fact, the scene would never have been naturally lit like this. So that's one of my problems with uh, doing over, uh, you know, usage of things like HDR is we are actually generating a lot of images that don't look natural anymore. So my recommendation, use it carefully. Hopefully you like the example I showed you. Here is another example of a similar type of an image. I mean, yes, yeah, it's a dark image. It's a nice image. It looks artistic. But even in the most natural situations, you would not have seen lighting like this in a square, a popular square, wherever you are. So what we're really doing with uh, tone mapping for high dynamic range images is taking, again, this whole dynamic range, which is shown here in the real world, and what we want to do is squish the whole range into a 0 to 255. And in essence, that's what tone mapping does. It takes the whole range, and based on the display characteristics and perhaps what few things that I want to emphasize, it compacts it out into this range. So yes, you do lose information, but if you save the... Uh, radiance map, you already have that information that you can use later. The things that it does, it basically takes the limited contrast information and maps it to the medium, display medium that you're using, and preserves details. Again, we'll be covering a little bit more of tone mapping uh, online in the class.